Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So I gotta say, we're doing really good in the subscriber department. Remember guys, we gotta hit 70,000 subscribers by March 31st for you to be eligible to win a Ledger Nano S or X. We're already at 62.4 thousand subscribers, so guys, subscribe today. And like the videos if you guys watch, uh, it is a free way to support the channel. I wanted to jump right into this. Tony, Tony underscore XRP's here on Twitter posted this. We've been in a bull market for over a month now, and just today we finally get a front page article in the New York Journal. I mean, I guess we could get worse things, right? Bitcoin trades above $50,000. And again, guys, this is from yesterday. Uh, in a first, cryptocurrency closes below high, up 68% for year with $909 billion in total circulation. So in my opinion, uh, this kind of news, this kind of coverage is going to start what you and I like to call FOMO. And I'm talking about real FOMO. You thought the FOMO was already kicked in. Uh, let's bring this back to the bull run of 2017. Now guys, the same thing happened here. Uh, we are currently seeing this trend gradually move up, move up, move up. Uh, and then there was a point in and around November, September, October, November, that's when Bitcoin went parabolic. Okay. This, this last lake here. Okay. After kind of chugging away, right? We could see Bitcoin chugging away, correcting, 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 and then vroom, you can see how that shift just kind of happened and you can see the trend went almost vertical. Okay, it was things like this, these types of catalysts that caused this Bitcoin rally to really go parabolic. That's when more retail money came in. That's when you would hear people say, oh, my grandmother just bought Bitcoin. This is how early we're into this game, guys. And so uh, there still are gains to be had. Uh, right now, Bitcoin trading just under its all-time high at about 51,200. Uh, let me put it here on the hourly. Uh, you guys can see we've been coming down just a little bit. 52,500 was the high or 600. Uh, and now coming right back down here. So not correcting too, too much. Let's bring up the XRP chart. XRP still following the Bitcoin trend uh, and it is correcting as well down to about 53 cents. But that's okay, guys, because if you are in Bitcoin or other altcoins and you're looking to take profit and you're looking to rotate, I know some of you guys watch the blockchain backer and the strategies he discusses make a ton of sense. This idea of rotating out of high performers, sticking them into low performers. So it's good to see that XRP is still undervalued in this space. We've got SB Investments here saying if we find support on our blue box, we can make a higher low and go to previous highs again. So it's looking like right now uh, this level is what is uh, constituting support, give or take, okay? Somewhere in the high 40s. If I throw a Fibonacci on here, let me do that real quick. Actually, let me move that out of the way. All right, throw Fibonacci on here. You guys can see uh, this level lines up quite neatly here to the 382, the 0.382. Okay, and we're gonna find that support around 49 and a half cents, give or take. Uh, I personally like to use zones, but you know, just to make the numbers easy, 0.498 or just shy of 50 cents, uh, that is the level that uh, SB Investing is talking about. You can see he even drew a trend line here uh, to show you guys wh what he's talking about here. So this is the trend line here, okay, lining up these uh, lows and we're making higher lows as you guys can see higher lows we did retrace back to the point 382 uh, came back up to the point five coming back down and so I suppose this would be uh, an optimal situation of course not going below this trend line but uh, you guys know uh, technical analysis gives us a good idea of where the trend is going to go it isn't always a perfect science and I don't know if you guys remember that video I did a while ago uh, I'll see if I can find it I'll link it up here in the top right hand corner cryptos here what if the SEC lawsuit is just noise and XRP would have still not been over a dollar and instead lag behind for weeks until all lost faith and dump their XRP for other altcoins and then the eruption would start to punish all weak hands and reclaim second position on market cap. Mr. Miller down here and uh, the video I did uh, had to do with this exact same pattern, courtesy of Mr. Miller underscore 21 on Twitter. Yes, I reckon XRP was always going to print this way. The fractal from 2017 was just before we took off was extremely similar. So uh, he shows these two uh, similar fractal patterns. And again, guys, if you haven't caught that video, uh, it is interesting to take a look at 2017, take a look at 2020 and into 2021 and uh, check out the similarities there. But in a lot of ways, you know, the crypto space trade uh, a lot of this has to do with uh, having a perfect storm and uh, you know the news other than the lawsuit because of course we know the lawsuit is uh, you know that uh, negative element that's kind of looming overhead of XRP hodlers but uh, you know by and large 
we have a lot of great news coming out for Ripple and XRP. So this one in particular I just saw today, Ripple is building the core ledger that mints CBDCs. Okay, this coming from Mac Attack XRP here on Twitter. Now, this is from an interview with James Wallace. Ripple is building the financial system for the future for the world's leading CBDCs. Now we don't talk a lot about CBDCs with regards to Ripple. I mean, in the early days, some were assuming that CBDCs would be uh, competition for Ripple's XRP. But I think this fact was misunderstood understood uh, near the beginning and uh, I'm hoping people are understanding what's going to be happening for the XRPL, XRP, and uh, that relationship that they're going to have with CBDCs down the road. So this is coming from James Wallace, uh, Vice President of Ripple X. He joined Ripple X from IBM where he had spent over 17 years, most recently as the tech giant's blockchain VP. And so he says he believes that blockchain technology will define the future of payments. Of course, uh, currently the payments industry still suffers from several bottlenecks, including high costs and low speed. Of course, we know uh, Ripple solves for that. At Ripple, we view the future of payments as the internet of value. The concept there is making it as easy to move money around the world as it is to move information today across the world. Uh, Ripple has been shifting its strategy over the years to position itself for success. And so he talks a little bit about the lines of credit, uh, but also using XRP as that bridge asset, avoiding pre-funded Nostro accounts. That was their main purpose. So then he goes into this idea uh, that Ripple is going to power CBDCs. According to a survey by the Bank for International settlements most central banks are currently dealing with CBDCs with over 80 percent that number is huge Wallace is confident that they are the future of payments giving central banks the opportunity to redefine payments he is most excited about CBDC use in cross-border payments to reduce costs uh, and enhance speed regions such as Southeast Asia South America and Africa will gain the most from CBDCs the Ripple X VP added however central banks must work on interoperability for CBDCs to thrive first they must interoperate with the existing local payment structure. Additionally, they must interoperate with different nations, enabling cross-border transfers. Then you start to think about cross-border interoperability. By the way, this is a quote from Wallace. How do you go from a digital pound to digital rupee? The central banks need to think about working with the private sector for this level of interoperability. We also require a balance between policy and technology. And so Ripple is working on being an integral part of the CBDC financial system. It's doing this by focusing on two key areas that they believe are critical. The first is building the core ledger that mints the CBDC, distributes and tracks it. Uh, we have a clear view that a private instance of an existing decentralized ledger is a good way to go. Uh, you take all the really robust experience of an open source project that's built a ledger that's been running for multiple years like the XRP ledger, uh, then you can create a new version. There's a bit more centrality controlled so central banks can be comfortable with it. The second phase Ripple is working on is interoperability, allowing users to move assets between blockchains. Therefore, the company is working on making XRP the ideal bridge currency between the upcoming CBDCs. So Ripple, not ending it with the XRP ledger, they are also creating a new version for banks that will indeed mint CBDCs. And of course, why wouldn't they optimize it with XRP? Think about that. They want to make XRP this ideal bridge currency. So uh, if countries are going to be utilizing their CBDCs, they're going to want that optimal experience. And XRP is going to be there to interoperate bank to bank, country to country, however you need it to be used. So some very exciting news here uh, coming out of the Ripple camp. Uh, and I also wanted to bring this up because John Deaton's been giving us a lot of great information with regards to uh, the SEC lawsuit. He did a part one on this, why the SEC versus Ripple case is the most significant SEC enforcement case in modern history. Uh, and so this is the part two on that, guys. Uh, I will leave part one here. It's in the uh, tweet thread here. So that's here if you guys uh, didn't catch that. But I wanted to bring this to your attention because I think it's important with what's going on today with this uh, latest news with regards to this CBDCs and Ripple. John Deaton says, I left off on part one by asking you which company has been actively and publicly attempting to replace SWIFT banking system for the last five years. Of course, the answer is Ripple. Brad Garlinghouse has publicly stated that everything Ripple does moves them closer to that goal. CBDCs and the development of stable coins are inextricably intertwined with Ripple's mission to replace the SWIFT payment system. In part one, I mentioned how Singapore's largest bank, DBS, stated that XRP is faster and cheaper than SWIFT. But what about the development of CBDCs? How does the XRPL play into that scenario? In fact, Ripple announced that it intends to leverage its payments platform on the XRPL for delivery of CBDCs. Garlinghouse 
publicly stated that central banks are looking to issue CBDCs on the XRPL. Garlinghouse also publicly stated XRP could be a key crypto asset in the digital dollar revolution. Ripple presented a plan to host CBDCs together with the XRP token. And so as we know, there has been an update to that, uh, namely the fact that they are looking to build a uh, core ledger that mints CBDCs, distributes and tracks them. So a bit of an update to this. Nevertheless, John Deaton writes, uh, the XRPL will host CBDCs and public and private entities are able to modify CBDCs according to their needs. As an aside, this use case alone makes XRP a non-security, but is this all Ripple hype or do others see XRP similar to how Ripple does? Well, the WEF, which is the World Economic Forum guys, named XRP as the most relevant crypto for CBDCs by banks. And if you don't remember that, here's a page directly from the World Economic Forum uh, outlining and dedicated to Ripple specifically. Ripple is a provider of global real-time settlement. It contributes updates to an open source software through GitHub and works to promote the network. Its uh, website helps customers and companies use the network and helps developers build Ripple applications. Visit their website here. Uh, but this is directly on the uh, WEF, the World Economic Forum website, a subpage here dedicated specifically to Ripple. David Schwartz, Ripple CTO, says that the XRPL will bridge between CBDCs. In short, XRP acts as a bridge currency. As an aside, uh, this use case alone makes XRP a non-security. After the WEF's comments regarding XRP, discussion emerged within the crypto community whether XRP would become the world's global CBDC or a bridge asset between all CBDCs. And I think it's pretty clear after today's announcement that uh, XRP is going to be that bridge. Well, all of this positive news is being published in the crypto investor community, uh, the SEC is nowhere to be found. The SEC was aware of all of this utility being discussed related to XRP and not only said nothing, but when asked, repeatedly refused to share information that would protect innocent investors. Not only did the WEF discuss the utility of XRP token, but long before the SEC's factually and intellectually dishonest claim that XRP is a security, when it commenced its enforcement action on December 22nd, the IMF had also listed XRP as a bridge currency. So the WEF, the IMF, both on board with this idea that XRP is going to be the world's bridge currency. So hence, internationally and in the United States, XRP was being described as a currency or commodity or utility token. The DOJ's FinCEN also classified XRP as a virtual currency. The SEC complaint against Ripple and XRP declaring that XRP was, always has been, and continues to be a security is likely the most far-reaching, outrageous, and absurd claim the SEC has ever alleged. Brian Brooks stated publicly that in the U.S. there are too many agencies in finance and banking. He openly asked the question, do we think it's best for the government to build a CBDC or utilize the private sector, which has already built one? Brian Brooks, without question, has been uh, discussing a product like XRP in the XRPL. I believe without a doubt that he was referencing XRP because he stated that the technology to build a CBDC was already built, but that the only issue was a lack of regulatory clarity. He could not have been referencing BTC or ETH because they have long enjoyed regulatory clarity by being declared non-securities by people from the SEC. Additionally, Brian Brooks has stated that the industry needs to know whether the SEC thinks XRP is a security. As an aside, utilizing XRP to help build CBDCs alone makes XRP a non-security. When you consider the economic destruction the SEC enforcement action caused, one immediately thinks that it was filed with reckless disregard for the collateral economic damage of thousands of innocent investors with absolutely no connection to Ripple, Brad, or Chris. Once you consider all the facts coupled with the fact that Clayton was warned by former SEC Chief Joseph Grunfest, who pleaded with Clayton not to file the action due to unprecedented multi-billion dollar losses of innocent investors, immediate thoughts of criminality come to mind. As a former federal prosecutor, I find it criminal that Clayton Heron Lee and the former SEC uh, enforcement director, what they have done to innocent investors with no connection to Ripple, including many that have never even heard of Ripple. Uh, as I previously tweeted, if the SEC is successful in classifying today's XRP as a security, then basically all crypto is in danger of being classified a security. Arguably, digital currencies, DeFi, and CBDCs have been the most talked about area of finance during the last several years. Exploding this due to the global pandemic, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies have generated more publicity and dialogue than any other financial topics and or instruments in the world. Uh, Bitcoin's dominance in the digital asset space demands its own thread. But needless to say, the digitization of money and currency is the most talked about financial topic of our time. Many experts have stated that digital currency is only the beginning. NFTs are huge, the tokenization of all assets 
assets is coming. Platforms like Robinhood, Square, and Uphold allow uh, for fractional shares in stocks, metals, and commodities. Professional athletes may create a tradable digital asset relating to their career. Uh, so then he goes on into uh, several different examples here, including Uphold. Green initiatives, guys, I'm going to skip over that part, uh, but I will leave this tweet in the description if you want to read further. He gives a nice little anecdote about his daughters, uh, saying how they are environmentally friendly and trying to uh, teach their old man to also save the planet. Uh, so he finishes this off by saying JP Terrio uh, and the AOC are on board. The point is that the digitization of all assets is here, but the government is lost. XRP has been the third largest crypto asset and it's under attack. SEC versus Ripple is now the most significant enforcement case in history. And you know, you and I have just been caught up in the middle of this, but uh, th this is significant considering what the outcome could mean for the future of finance. And I keep saying it on this channel, Ripple and XRP are going to be at the center. They already are in many regions of the world. Value is already being traded on the XRPL. Uh, finally, just wanted to finish this off uh, with Wrath of Kahneman's tweet here. Uh, just tweeting out this uh, article here with regards to MasterCard and Island Pay launching the Sand Dollar, a CBDC card. And uh, even he writes down here, not directly XRP, related, though Bob Way did speak of a competitive effect of the CBDC. Commercial use of CBDCs seem significant. So uh, more talk of CBDCs, of course, the World Economic Forum, understanding the importance of Ripple, John Deaton's part two to this tweet thread, giving us more reason to believe uh, that XRP should be deemed a currency. And uh, we're still kind of questioning why the SEC would do this. But I think ultimately there is too much mounting pressure for the United States to really prevent this financial inclusion and uh, financial advancements in this modern era. Ripple and XRP are there. It's not stopping them from continuing what they had already set out to do. Not only that, they are now building a core ledger that will be minting CBDCs. So all this is looking quite positive to me, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel, guys. We got to hit 70,000 by March 31st. You could be eligible for a Ledger Nano S or X. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.